said on the funeral, I don't have to write thank you. I just sat there writing in the chair. And I sat there and, you know, it's amazing how God will speak to you when you will really sit there and, you know, write where you are. This is the morning that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. David said, oh, magnify the Lord with the, let us exalt on, his preacher. name together. This is a wonderful, wonderful day in the life of the Grace Church as we celebrate 124 years of God's blessing upon this congregation. Jesus said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And grace, we've been through many dangers, toils, and snares. But 124 years, yes, we are yes, still sir. Yes, sir. standing. Yes, sir. Come on, let's give God a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah. Let's hallelujah. give God a shout on this morning because he's hallelujah. worthy to be praised. We greet you in the sanctuary, greet you on Facebook and YouTube as we prepare to worship through song. Like to do, like to do in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Oh, like to do in the morning, gently rest upon my heart. Come on, put those hands together. Like to do in the morning, gently rest, gently rest upon. The do like the do in morning, gently rest upon my heart. Come on, come 
going, bro. Time to keep it, man. Oh, just to rest. Rest, Jesus. Rest, rest, Jesus. Rest, rest, Jesus. Life to do. Life to do in the morning. Just move. God hand clap of praise. Anybody need the Lord to heal? Anybody need the Lord to deliver? Move Jesus. Somebody say, come by here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come by here, Jesus. Somebody need you. Come by here. Somebody need you. Come by here. Yes, God. Come on, preacher. Yes, God. Amen. Uh, like the dew in the morning. Yes, sir. Freshly falling upon me. Lord, I need you to move. Yes. I need you to move on my situation, circumstances. Yes, Lord, I yes, just need yes, you to show yes, up yes. for me. Come on, preacher. Let's receive Deacon Chapman is going to come with our morning scripture and our sick report and to take us to the throne of grace as we remain standing. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 20. Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Amen. When Jesus came to the region of Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, what do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. When Jesus replied, blessed are the Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter. On this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Today, I lift up everyone that is feeling under the weather. Some are not feeling well just one of their bad days and we lift everyone up I especially lift up today Mrs. Ruth Booker who just celebrated a birthday Friday the 12th I ain't, I'm not going to tell her age but she up there <laughs> yeah, so just keep her in prayer um, she is scheduled for surgery coming up this month uh, Miss Canary Smith she's doing well Miss Alma White is doing well and we're going to lift up a uh, special prayer for Miss Pamela Stewart, who was in a car accident. And um, she's doing well, but, you know, just a little sore there. But um, she's been, got some things she got to take care of. 
Okay. Yes. Let's start out with that. Thank you, dear Lord, for this anniversary yeah. celebrating Thank Grace you. Baptist Church. 124 years. Wow. That is a blessing. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You have kept this church, and you're still keeping this church. So we thank you for the past, the present, and the future. You have been blessed. We've been blessed with our pastors, our past pres, um, pastors, pres, um, pastors that are brought this church to where they are today. We're blessed with our present pastor, and he's doing a marvelous job and bringing us into the future. We thank you for everything that you have given us, given us this freedom to come and worship to this church. Some places don't have this opportunity to do this yeah, freedom yeah. of worship, but you have given that to us. We thank you for all the different talents, the blessings that you have brought in this church. Everybody is a part of the body, yeah. and everybody brings something in here, the yeah, eye, yeah. the arm, the leg, the finger. You all play a part in this church, and we thank you, and we thank God for blessing us to bring that into our congregation. We thank you for just allowing us to have that spirit to worship you. Please continue to give us that spirit to worship you because we know that we can do nothing without you, that you are our God, and we know that you hold the keys to everything in our life, everything that will happen to us. We ask you to just bless us as we leave this place and we go to our jobs this week or yeah, our home yeah. or wherever we are. Please bless us and allow us to keep our blessings just flowing out within us, but onto those people that we meet on the street. Just a smile. Those blessings that we can give to anyone. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, and we ask your continuous blessings. All these things we ask in thy name. Amen. It's it reaches. It reaches. about the blood of Jesus. It will never How many are grateful for the blood this morning? Oh, it will never It will never It's mine. And the people of God said amen. It reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it flows to the lowest valley. Yes. Here's my part. The blood that gives me strength. Yes, yes. From day to day. Come on, preacher. I said the blood that gives me strength. Yes. From day to day, it will never, ever lose its power. We do greet you with Jesus' joy on this, our Lord's morning. And again, we praise God for 124 years. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 124 years that God has sustained and kept this ministry. Yes, Amen. Yes. And we can testify because when COVID hit and when the world resumed, a lot of churches went out of business. Yes, yes. But we're still here, Grace. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. 
And so it is with great delight for me to introduce our preacher. Amen. Um, he shared in way of uh, we were supposed to celebrate our fifth anniversary and COVID came and we wasn't able to do that. And then we did it in year six. And he was the preacher um, for that anniversary service. Amen. Um, he is a very, very, very close dear friend and brother to this preacher. Um, I say that only about a hand few of preachers. Um, I can count them on one hand, actually. Uh, but Pastor Pelzer um, is one who God has gifted in so many ways. He is a well-renowned musician, producer, uh, produced on records with Jill Scott, um, Fresh Prince, DJ Jazzy Jeff, and I mean, he, the list goes on and on. You would never know that because he does not brag about that. Mm -hmm. um, but what he talks about is the Christ that's in him that yeah. saved him and delivered him. Um, he can play the organ, whatever you throw at him, he can play. Amen. He's gifted in so, so many ways. But I love his humility, um, that when we're together, um, we compliment each other. So he called me yesterday. He said, what are you wearing? Because <laughs> I know you. <laughs> he said, I want to make sure you know I'm, I'm with you. And I said, man, I'm just wearing a suit and pair of sneakers. He said, I knew it. He said, I, I knew you was going to do something. Um, and this is how we operate. Um, if you look at the poster, um, the banner up the steps of me and Sister Reese, he's the one that took those pictures. Um, right. He All did right. them for our 20th wedding anniversary. Um, and so that's why I say he's a photographer. Whatever you, you want to put him in, he does it all. But most importantly, he's a great preacher. Um, he is a great, great preacher. And he is uh, one who Philadelphia holds to great value and esteem in preaching. And so after our praise and worship ministry comes, the next preaching voice will be that of my friend and my brother, Pastor Keith Pelzer. Let's receive him by saying amen. In commemorance of our 124th anniversary, we're just going to sing something that will commemorate this. Oh, we come this far. We come this far by faith.
I'm gonna treat Come on, Grace, come on, come on. Oh, we stand on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. Grace, we've been staying on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. To preach. Yes. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to stay on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Battlefield. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look at somebody and say, until. Until. Say it again. Say, until. Until. Until is a big word. Yes, sir. <laughs> we used to sing a song, I tried and I tried. Mm. I prayed and I prayed. Mm. Until. And um, I still have not seen Jesus face to face yet. And so I'm going to keep on praising him until. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm going to keep on trusting yes, until. Yes. Anybody know that's what faith is all about? Until. Yes, sir. Come on, preacher. People looking at you say, you ain't arrived yet. You say, yeah, but until. I'm just going to keep on praising. <laughs> all right. Amen. I was trying to preach the sermon in like five seconds, but it didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> Greetings, Grace Baptist. It's great to be here once again, and I know this is the anniversary celebration. Um, I am grateful for Pastor Chris Reese and his lovely wife to have me come back up, and to all of you here, amen. We say, I'll just get this out the way, and I'm going to give my little Sunday school lesson and sit down. We say uh, a brother and friend, that means a lot in these days. Because there are people who aren't with you through your ups and downs. It's kind of like they only meet you in your high place. But they don't know all of the stuff that you've been through. And so they claim to know you, but they don't really know you. But when you are a friend, that's, that's why we like saying there's not a friend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like the lowly Jesus. Not, grandma would say, not near one. Not near one. No, not one. Yes, None else can heal our soul's diseases. No, not one. And he shall guide us until. <laughs> Y'all see that until word? It's still working. It's still working. And so when I know that someone knows the Lord and loves the Lord Jesus, you can be a Peter, you can be a James, a John, as long as you ain't a Judas. Amen. But, <laughs> but, but that's one of those things that we have to be right for one another. And I thank God for Pastor Reese being a brother and a friend for me. When I needed him and some of the phone calls, he wouldn't understand that I've been going through. But it'll be a simple phone call, and uh, he'll lift me up. And it's good to have friends like that. And then one of his pastor mentors, one of mine, I adopted him as well, Pastor Wendell Mapson, a great preacher, man of God. And so we know how to lean on wisdom. I'm working in here something because you said 124 years. So let's celebrate that, 124 <laughs> Is anybody here from 124 years ago? Anybody in the building? <laughs> Which means we are standing on something that somebody else has built. Amen. I'm trying to check the temperature in the room. Let's get into the word of God. Father, we thank you now 
for this day of preaching and this day that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, God, that as we walked in, the atmosphere had already been set because those who love you, those who hold you dear to their heart, they have given you their thank you, God. If we forgot to say thank you right now, we say thank you, God, for opening up these blinded eyes of ours and allowing us to see the sunshine in a bright day, allowing us to touch one another, allowing us to get from A to B. And God, we thank you for it is you that will take us to where we need to be. And God, we thank you for your grace your mercy, your kindness. Hide now, Keith Pelzer behind the cross, and we thank you, God, for this opportunity to preach. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to invite your attention um, to the book of 2 Corinthians, and I'm going to read one verse, but if you um, glance at the chapter starting at verse 1, you can glance on down, um, and I'll be in the ballpark of verses 7 through 10. But here's how the word reads. It says, we always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may also be displayed in our body. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord. I want to talk to you with this thought in mind. The truth about the treasure. The truth about the treasure. Maybe if I had read a couple more verses, we'd have got a shout when I said that topic. But you know this verse. You've heard your pastor preach on it. You read it, and it touched your dear soul because it says something about the treasure that we have. And the interesting thing is I wanted to talk about the truth about the treasure. Not that you don't know the truth, but for most of us, we need to simplify what that truth is about the treasure. If we really looked at ourselves in the mirror and look at what we've gone through, if we look in our old printout of pictures and we look at old reels and old tapes, and if you're a little bit younger and you're a little bit newer, you can look back on your Facebook post before COVID, leading up to COVID, and on the other side of COVID, and you can say the statement that we all say that's cliche, I don't look like what I've been through. That is because there's something about the outside that changes and it shifts very often, but it's something about the inside that is consistent. We always carry the death of Jesus in our body so that the life of Jesus may also be displayed in our body, the truth about the treasure. I want to suggest to many of us that we actually suffer from identity crisis sometimes. You may think that we don't, but we do. You can ask our name. We can tell you our name. We can tell you where we came from. We'll talk about our family. We'll talk about, I've been in Grace Baptist before we even did the purple carpets, before the pulpit looked like that. But then soon as the enemy gets on your nerves, we start running in the corner and start hiding. We have to call back up, and we can't stand on our own two feet because of our identity crisis. If we really knew who we are, we would not be falling back when it's time to stand up. If we really knew who we are, we would not be retreating to a side corner when the enemy starts barking, but we would bark back with a louder Rottweiler voice and say, you need to sat down already because you don't know who you messing with. Because many of us, if you like Philadelphia people, we always run around talk about greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. But every time you turn around, it's not the enemy, but it's the inner you, inner me, that's messing messing me up sometimes where we have to say I got to recognize who I am the reason why praise team it's not your fault but the reason why we try to pump people up for praise money at times is because they forgot who they actually are if you knew that you were the head not the tail you would stand up like it if you knew that you was really somebody, you shout like it because you wouldn't worry about who's sitting next to you judging you because, baby, you ain't been through the last seven days with me and you don't know what I've been through. But I got to give God all the praise. And the reason why I stand up every now and then and turn around is because every time I turn around, God keeps making a way. Every time I turn around, God keeps opening doors I could not see. Every time I told y'all before, just turn around around real quick because every time y'all looking at me funny I turn around it's like he keeps on making a way that's my identity 
Jeremiah, Jeremiah, in, in, in chapter 1, verse 5, y'all, y'all know this before, you know, I know the plans I have for you, and uh, before I, uh, I knew thee, I sanctified thee in thy mother's womb, and I said this before when I came here, Pastor Shaw, old man from Philly, preacher, White Rock Baptist, he said that it's the context of squeezing you into your mother's womb, so if I squeeze you in there, that means there's combustion that can happen when the enemy starts messing with you, are y'all feeling me right there? When you think about an M80, I don't know if y'all know about that, an M80 or firecracker they're little small things but if you can if you light it so when the enemy starts gaslighting you when people start lighting your fire y'all better be careful because you might hear and I'm about to blow up because of what God has put in me stop telling these children what they cannot do but if the enemy want to tell them you remind that child that you are anointed that you are gifted you better understand your pedigree is not just your last name but because I'm saved sanctified filled with the Holy Ghost there's something that's pouring into you that's ready to come out that your enemy cannot handle the the, the thing is there's content under pressure that we have but in this text Paul starts this chapter with saying something like seeing that we have this whole situation it says we faint not it doesn't mean that you don't faint but it's trying to say uh, come on get yourself back up And know that you can still do it. The text says that we have this treasure. It doesn't say that I'm I'm gold and you're titanium. It doesn't say that I'm onyx and you're something else. It says we have this treasure. Now, Now, clay that has been around longer than other clay is going to show sign of deterioration. It's it's going to start to crumble. It's going to start to get weak. But the treasure is still fresh. And in spiritual terms, we understand, we call that deterioration, wisdom, and experience. In other words, you once were young, but now you're getting old. Um, sometimes I preach with a little fan that the women have at parties because I used to tease my wife about her hot flashes. But then once I started getting to that 50 age and I got there, I started realizing, can I borrow your fan, baby? Because I'm getting a little bit older and I'm not as young as I used to be. So now the outward man starts to get towards this perishing. We start to have aches and pains. We don't get up as fast as we used to. We stop racing the young boys on the block because we ain't got nothing to prove. I used to could run Cat Williams a nice 50-yard dash, but right now I can't do it like I used to. But I still got something on the inside. That's worth more than most of these folk around here because I got a treasure on the inside. This is why I'm going to celebrate y'all. There needs to be a distinction between the building, the bodies in the building, and the belief in the bodies that occupy the building. Can, can I say that again for us educated for that? There, there has to be a distinction uh, with the building, the bodies in the building, and the belief in the bodies that occupy the building. Because if we talk about 124 years, there's other bodies that will keep the building going. But it's something about the bodies that were in the building that somebody else built. That if the bodies that's in the building don't have the right belief system, it ain't doing nothing. Something that was built 124 years ago. What was built on the inside matters more than the outward. It's something about that treasure, ain't it? Because I've seen a lot of good buildings. But when the building closed, the Bible never got closed. When the buildings got torn down, the the belief never got torn down. When the body stopped occupying the building, the belief carried on to another building. There's something about the body, the building, and the belief in the whole thing. So, So now remember on your flyer, it says celebrating 124 years. Building on our legacy, rooted in the past and growing towards the future. This treasure is the light of the gospel. It is the message. It's the voice of Jesus and the glory of God reflected in Christ Jesus. This voice will forever outlive the vessel. Let me try this again. The voice is going to outlive the vessel. Let let me try one more time. The voice is going to outlive the vessel. 
This building without people inside of it ain't saying nothing. The people, the bodies inside of the building ain't saying nothing unless the belief is talking from the inside out. This is why I can be right with pain. I can be on my deathbed, but I can still proclaim the love of Jesus and help the doctors in the room, help the nurse in the room. Y'all ain't talking to me. Any preachers or deacons ever been to the hospital and the nurse come out the room crying and you like, baby, is you about to die? They said, no, but they told me about the love of Jesus before they left out of this earth. They told me about the forgiveness of God before they left my room. They told me that Jesus is a healer and I'm trying to figure out but you about to die they said but baby I got somewhere to go because the earth is going to get an empty body and heaven's going to get a living soul because of the treasure in there if y'all shouted I would have cut across the field and the old grandmother said that's because the law is going to snatch me out of this body Because he's going to come to get his treasure that's in earthen vessels. So, so, so here it is. I got three things like a little Baptist preacher. I got three things I'm going to be done. First thing you want to understand the truth about the treasure is the power. Somebody say power. It's right there in your text in verse 7. Understand what's in there. And the thing I'm trying to tell y'all about when you celebrate anniversaries, understand this. Uh, I remember my daddy had a 67 Chevy, and I was born in 71, but he told me about the car 15,000 times. And daddy would talk about how he had a sleeper car. I don't know if some of the OGs up here know about a sleeper car. A sleeper car didn't say it's fast. Didn't have the stripes on there. Didn't have the hot wheels on there. It was just clean, and you see an OG behind the wheel. But then the young boy would get up and got the pipes and stuff. You know, like his car fast. And he jumping it, jumping it, jumping it, jumping it. But then old daddy would just sit there and sit there with his clutch. And when the light turned green, daddy would pop that clutch. And that old sleeper car, scared. The problem was what the young boy didn't understand, he looked at the outside but didn't understand what was working underneath the hood. And there's a lot of Christians that you look nice and speedy on the outside. You got a spoiler kit, you got the drop top, you got the rims, armor, oil tile, tenant windows, and you ain't saying nothing because it's all about the power, baby. So, 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 So I learned from the old saints It ain't about bragging on what's on the outside, but it's talking about letting them see what's on the inside. Verse 7 shows a double contrast because it's the treasure of the gospel of light and the worthless clay pots, meaning that you can do whatever you want to the outside, but sooner or later that car going to rust. You can do whatever you want to the outside, but sooner or later it's going to run down. But if you got something on the inside, can I... So, so, so here, is, here is the thing. It's the spirit that's powering us on the inside. And that treasure is God's power, his voice in us. But power, the problem is, I, I'm, I'm going to flow through this because y'all like me preaching so far. Watch this here. The, the, the power is good, but the problem is most people don't understand that there's problems that come with the power. I'm going to unpack this real quick. But the thing is, verse 8 through 9, it tells you, you are not immune to issues. You ever, you ever sit up late night and the commercial comes on and it says, here is something and we're going to fix that. And this drug is a good power to get rid of that problem. But the power that the, the, the drug has to deal with the headache, with the stomach ache, with the back pain, it comes with a bunch of problems. They call side effects. <laughs> you stay there long enough, you, you say, oh, there's something for my headache. And then they say, side effects include. Well, well, for for the Christian, right here in Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians, these are your side effects. You want to know what your side effects are? Side effect number one, we're troubled on every side. 
Now, the difference between the word of God and the drug companies that fix it with side effects is they tell you the side effects, but then they got to empty a, a new drug to take care of the side effects, to take care of the side effects, to take care of the side effects. And you start to say, well, I might as well just deal with the headache. Come on, high five your neighbor if y'all know what I'm talking about. You say, that sound good. You know, baby, I'll just deal with this old headache. Because I don't need all that. But, but the difference with what God gives. God says side effect number one is we're troubled on every side. But there's a conjunction. And it says, but. The reason I like the Christian Standard Bible translation, because it don't say yet. It just says, but through everything. So, number one, it says we're troubled on every side, and that means at the same time, meaning that whatever happens to me that's bad, at the same time, God is working it for my good. Y'all just missed what I just tried to hit right there. Watch this here. There's something that's happening here, and I'm complaining about it, but then at the same time, the but that God adds in there, it takes care of all of the problems that I got on this side, and it's working it for my good on that side. In the Hebrew, it basically says God weaved it together. Don't get uptight, but it's right. Watch this here. Uh, my wife's a hairdresser. A weave has to be right. Y'all don't get mad with me up in here. I can't talk about nobody. But I'm telling y'all, I learned something with the hairstylists in my family. And I said, why do they keep coming to y'all? They said, because baby, we sew it in right. Meaning you can swim with it, you can work out with it, you can fight with it, you can sleep with it, and it ain't going nowhere. So when God works it for your good, he works it so that your faith ain't going to fail. I try to fix that up for somebody. So, so the thing is, the thing is, at the same time, that's why I can say all of my good days. Y'all telling y'all age, outweigh my bad days so I won't. So, so, so the, the other side effect is this, perplexed but not in despair. I don't even got to sit there. Y'all already know what that means because we wake up trying to figure out where this pandemic coming from. But because we're not in despair, we didn't go from 120 some years and just stop. We didn't go to 118 and stop. We here at 124 because we might have been perplexed about the pandemic, but we were not in despair. The other side of fact is we're persecuted but not forsaken. Last one is we're cast down but not destroyed. But the thing is, you got to understand, your power is greater than your problem. If you understood that the power that worketh in you is greater than your power, brother, I see your hand up. It took me a little while. I was slow because I went through some days that I forgot the power that worketh in me is greater than my problems. I'm going to sit on it until somebody shout on it. If you realize that your power is bigger and greater than your problem, you will start acting different on a daily basis because you will stop calling people that can't do nothing for you, can't change your situation, and you calling your neighbor like they going to give you some juice that you can't get from God. No, the power that I got is from on high and that's the truth about the treasure I'm almost done here because when we understand that we have power first remember remember this God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind in other words before you start dealing with your mind recognize you got power first Okay, if I can help y'all real quick, you can tell me all you want about how smart your computer is. But you got a real dead, dumb computer if you ain't got no power. Okay, I just heard somebody feelings right there. You, you, you can brag on how muscular your car is. But if you ain't got no power in it, it ain't doing nothing. Yo. There's a preacher I know that shifted from gas power and went to electric. And I'm sure that preacher got a ton of preaching points to preach about how significant power is. The vehicle has 
navigation in it. It taps into power from on high, direction from on high. But you, if you ain't got no power in it, you can't get no direction from on high. Y'all ain't talking to me yet. When you drive it, you have to get on the road, but you have to deal with the power that was in it from when you left home base. And if you run out of power when you get away from home, you have to get to a place that can identify with the same power, with the same plug, with the same fit to get you the juice to get back to your home base. The reason why church is so important is because many of us Christians, we like Teslas, but we drive away from church and think we're going to get some power somewhere else. No, you got to plan where you're going to make sure there's power when you get there. Because you can't just leave home and run anywhere, but wherever you run, you got to make sure is there power wonder working because I can't get back home if I ain't got no power and if you're stuck you look at your neighbor and you say where did you get your power last point here I'm going to take my seat there's, there's the truth about the treasure is there's, there's power and it comes with its problems but lastly, you got to understand the purpose. The purpose would seem clear that we ought to spread the gospel, go ye therefore into all the world, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but when you realize, as I just said, that your purpose is going to always suffocate your problem. When you understand that your, your power is greater than your problem, you can pursue your purpose. Whatever the purpose is and the vision is for this house of worship, the people of God have to understand you can't do it without recognizing your power and then recognize that problems are going to come. I used to hate to sit in church meetings when everybody got a voice about what the problem is, but nobody talking about the solution. And sometimes that silent generation of mothers, they would just keep quiet and you got to go over and that. You got to charge them up and say, mother, I need you to speak up because you've been through dangers seen and unseen. You got to remind these youngins up in here that God has brought you from a mighty long way. You might have got the church established off of chicken dinners and stuff, but find out with the new way of doing it, but establish in them, I had a mind to work. You got to talk to them about Nehemiah and say, we was just doing what Nehemiah and them was doing. We didn't know how God was going to fix it, but we were willing to be available to work things out. When your power is greater, you pursue your purpose, always bearing about, and the dying goes with the life. And in that context, we have manifestation, meaning that once you understand the power, you understand the problems that come with it, it'll start to manifest within you that I'm not the only one that had problems. Do you understand that Jesus came from a place of no problems but stepped into a realm of problems but he came into that realm with all power in his hand he came down through 40 and two generations of problems and then he showed up to a virgin that had a problem because she was pregnant with Jesus she suffered a problem trying to figure out I don't can't tell you how this happened but the Lord did it God did it within me her problem was in her marriage trying to figure out well who did this thing and she said it was the Holy Ghost but she still had problems because her friends did not understand but with her problem she ran into a problem because there was an old woman named Lisbeth and Lisbeth didn't even know I don't know how we did this thing but we's got us a baby on the way and then they understood there's another problem because there was a baby in one womb a baby in another but when the problem showed up to the problems there was a positive that happened because something jumped in the other person that had a problem that had a problem but when the problems got together for a purpose it said that this one in your belly is supposed to lead the way for the one in your belly and there's something about a jump that happens now I need y'all to do me a favor I need y'all to understand that many people forget about their power 
And the reason why they are sitting still is because they just need a jump from somebody. And the way that we used to do it, y'all ain't got to do this now, but see, back in the day, I used to carry jumper cables with me in my car all the time. Not because my battery had a problem, but just if I can help somebody. As I travel along the way, is there anybody up in here that you used to just carry jumper cables? Not because you ain't got a fresh battery, but because there just may be somebody that need my help. And if you are sitting in your row right now, I know we don't need to be touchy-feely, but just touch the person's shoulder in front of you and say, baby, I'm just giving you a jump right now. But the thing is, you got to take the black cable and put it on first because that is the negative space so that you don't mess stuff up. But see, once we connect on that level, there's a red one that when you connect that, you start to see a light shift. That don't mean it's going to turn on automatically, but you got to let it simmer for a little minute. Y'all telling y'all age back there, you, you say, baby, it ain't going to start right now, but it's flowing. I see you ain't moving yet, but the power is working in you. And as the power is working in you, you give a little time and wait on the Lord. As he renews your strength. Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching. And then now give it a try and understand the power that's working in you. I'm, I'm, I'm done here. I'm going to sit down. The reason why I love a great teaching preacher is because in this day and age of pulpit pimps. I'm, I'm sorry. Y'all not going to have me back. People that's just uh, entertaining folk, but not enlightening folk. People that's just talking to soothe your, your, your emotions and your shell, but not dealing with the spirit on the inside. And if in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh, that means that the word got into flesh, but flesh shouldn't get into the word. So, 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 so here it is in my, in my two minutes into my close, I promise you, in two minutes everybody stand up so I know to sit down. Watch this here. Um, my, 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 my wife, my wife, I love her so much. She's, she's not here. Um, she came last time, but she's not here. Um, and uh, she, she, has this, she has this thing with our boys that she wants to get stuff that I don't even think they need. And what she got was, back in the day, she got this thing for the first son. It was called Power Wheels. And uh, the thing about the power wheels that I love was she, she got this car, but I'm very analytical about stuff. And because I'm analytical about stuff, I looked at it and the outside of it looked good. I seen it rolling and I'm like, that's a good looking car, but I got a problem with what it says and what it's doing. It says it's power wheels, but it looked like it ain't got no power. So I charged that battery up, put the kid in it, the kid's riding down the street, and the thing, I could, I could crawl faster than the car was moving. <laughs> so I, I tried to mess with the stuff and shifted it, and it, it, it got a little bit faster, but I could still walk faster than the car was moving. After a while, the kid starts to get older, he gets frustrated with the car because he's looking at me like, yeah, I don't know what mom got me. And she paid a lot, she, I paid a lot of money for what she told me to pay for. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm upset because I invested in this, but it's not doing what I think it should be doing. It's not impressive. I invested in this, and I expect more out of this thing. I tried it, and it ain't doing nothing. I gave it time. I gave it thought. It ain't doing nothing. But then one day I realized I got frustrated enough, and so I got the manual to the car. I had the car, I was using the car, but I got away from the manual. So I, I pulled the manual out and I started reading it. First page told me how to put it together. I did that already. Next page told me that the kid got to be a certain size, certain weight. I know that already. It told me you got to charge it. I know that already. But there's a problem. Just when I was about to give up, I got there to that back page. And when I flipped to it, I saw something in the red writing. And it said, when the child 
gets to a proper age and is experienced handling the daily functions of this car, there is a screw that's sitting in the middle. If you take a screwdriver and you take that screw out, it'll allow the shifter to move one notch further. And so when I went out to the car and I did exactly as the book told me to do. Reading is fundamental. I, I went back to the book. I, and the book told me to take this screw out and it said, now try it. And I put the kid back in the car and I tell you when he shifted to that next gear. The car didn't just move like it used to, but it was able to run up hills and mountains. The car was able to jump curves. It was able to outrun the people down the street. But somebody said, I thought that the car was slow. I said, it was slow. But when I read the, bi when I read the book, I've been riding this thing for a long time. 50 years I've been in church. I was going to church, but church wasn't going in me. But when I read the book, when I read further than Psalm 23, when I read further than 1 Corinthians, when I read further than death, where's thy sting? Oh, grave, where's thy victory? I read, be steadfast. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for you know that your labor is not in vain. And so when I see my Savior Jesus dying there on the cross, I can say that Jesus died with power in his hands. And Jesus was there on the cross, but he died with power in his hands. So much power. The power that he had to talk to a thief on the right and on the left. He had the same power that he healed the sick and raised the dead his voice was still power if you're looking at me funny I want to help somebody that his power was so much in his voice uh, that we have the seven last words uh, and the very thing that I love so much about his words uh, is the first word where he says father forgive them for they know not what they do uh, can I suggest to you that you got power to leave this place today and let your family know it's all right uh, what you did to me before you can let your enemies know it's all right uh, how you treated me on last year uh, but because of the power that worketh in me I can deal with the problems that come my way uh, because there's a purpose uh, that I take my power with my problems uh, and Jesus uh, he carried with power uh, all of the problems of the world uh, but he stayed in his purpose uh, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. I must needs go to the cross. I, I got to die, but there's your conjunction. You can tear this body down, but in three days, uh, I'll raise it up again. Uh, and the thing that I love about Jesus uh, is that he left us here, uh, but he left us with power. Uh, he said, after you receive uh, the power from on high, uh, greater works than this shall ye do. Uh, is there anybody here uh, that can say I got power uh, to manage my problems uh, I got power uh, to get through my week uh, I've got power uh, wonder work and power uh, in the blood of the lamb uh, and it might be in this jar uh, it might be in this vessel uh, but when this body decays uh, the same power uh, that raised Jesus from the dead is going to be the same power to lift me up. It's going to be the same power God, to take me to glory. God. It's going to be the same power that my work shall follow me. God. It's going to be the same power. Hey, hey, hey. The truth about the treasure. Don't let nobody tell you what you're not. Don't let nobody talk you out of your game. Because you have power and yes, you got your problems, but your purpose is going to suffocate everything. God bless you. Standing up all over the church, the truth about the treasure is I have power. And Pastor Pelzer, you was not in our life transformation class this morning. 
but we talked about those problems this morning. And we said that I told the class to tell your problems that they have a problem. And his name is Jesus. Yeah. Here's an, another P I'll add to this. I'm not preaching behind the preacher, but here's what we said earlier is that you got to be willing to remain faithful in the process. That's because you have problems don't mean that they're going to go away right away. But your problems will take you through a process. And there you will discover your purpose. But a lot of folks want to quit in the process. And I share tells her that the Sixers former coach told the city of Philadelphia, just trust the process. You may not understand what the Lord is doing, but just trust the process. And the process will reveal your purpose. Let's celebrate the man of God as he preached to us today. If you are here this morning, the first thing is that you, in order to receive the power, you got to be plugged into it. And if you're not plugged into Jesus, you can't receive power. And so as he said, ain't nobody asked him to put me in his sermon. Talking about my Tesla, amen. But if I don't plug it up, it's not going to have any power. And if you're not plugged into Jesus, you're not going to receive any power. And so I extend the invitation to you not to join Eversource. Because that power is limited. If a breaker is destroyed or broken, you will be without power. But I've discovered that when you plug into Jesus, you'll never lose power. So the first invitation is for those of you who don't have a relationship with God. Simply means, Pastor, I, I, I don't know. And if you don't know, you need to come. And it's not about church membership. But it's about your soul salvation. That if you die today, will heaven be your home? I don't want to get a call and have to eulogize you and not sure whether or not who's going to pick you up. I know who's going to pick me up when my eyes close. I don't want you to be out there somewhere in eternity and not know who's going to pick you up. But you want to make sure that the Lord is going to pick you up. And so if you are here today, you don't have that relationship with Christ, I extend the invitation for salvation. Salvation is a very simple word. It just simply means to be delivered from the penalty, power, and presence of sin. It simply means that I want to be delivered from hanging out with the devil and his ways. And let me say this. I'm a transparent preacher. This is a transparent church. I said it this morning. Just because you come to the Lord don't mean everything going to be all right. Some things will remain the same. But then he'll give you strength to endure it. He'll get you through some stuff. And see, that's the problem, as he said, that these preachers with bad theology say, you just give it to Jesus and everything's going to be all right. There are sometimes some things the Lord will allow you to stay in. But he'll give you strength to endure it. And so if you don't have a relationship with God, my first invitation is for salvation. Won't you come give your life to the Lord today? Get in a relationship with him. The second invitation is that you don't have a church home. And I often say this, no Christian ought to be homeless. You are not to be going from one church to another trying to figure out, is this the best church? Every church that have people have problems. There's no perfect church. But I tell you about this church, we are a Bible-believing, teaching church. We may not have all the hype that other churches have, but you're going to get a sound word. 
You're going to get people that love you. You're going to get people that will pray for you. You're going to get people that's going to encourage you. If you are looking to be around real folks, we are that church. I wish I could get a witness. I said, if you're looking to be in a real place, Lord have mercy. This is our honoree today, and I, and she honored God. Look at there. We're honoring her today, but she said, let me honor God. Yeah, come on. Watch this. Is there another wants to come with my sister and family? Take that step out in faith. I just want my life to be better. I, I, I just need a source of encouragement. And like I said, we, we ain't got the, the hokey pokey and all that stuff. But what we have is Jesus. Y'all, y'all, y'all. So if you're looking for real folks with real problems, with real issues, we're the place to be. But if you're looking to be entertained, that's not us. I'm not putting on no costume to entertain you. But I'm going to open up the Bible and give you a word to help you in your circumstance situation. If you are here, come on. Step out today. Say, excuse me. I just need to get myself together. It's not by accident you are here. God has you here on purpose. With all your problems, you don't have no power. You are here for a purpose today so that you can get power to deal with your problems. There's another one to come. Come on, make up your mind. Don't be ashamed or embarrassed. Or I don't want people to look at me and all that kind of stuff. They don't have no heaven or hell to put you in. Come on. Finally, the altar is open for prayer. The altar is open for prayer. Won't you come? Maybe you have some problems. You're running out of power. Let us pray for you today. said in life transformation class this morning and let me just say you need to get here at 9 a.m. you just don't know the blessing in this class it's like Sunday school on a whole different level but we deal with you we ain't talking about Jonah and the whale y'all heard that Daniel and the lions then y'all know how that story ends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Y'all know how that ends. But do you know how your story is going to end? And so we deal with transformational lessons to help you. Because watch this, you face daily issues. I took a survey, Pastor, this morning. And I said, how many of you didn't have any issues last week? And only 1%, one person said, Pastor, I ain't had none on Wednesday. No issues. I said, Lord, thank God for you. But all of us, the rest of us, had problems Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, even today, dealing with issues. And you need a word, an authentic, genuine word. And I tell you, not to be perfect, it irks my soul when preachers try to make people be perfect. No, we got issues. We're in this together. The song says, I need you, you need me. We're all part of God's family. I need you to survive. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. He about to get on the, on, on, on the piano. Y'all turn that off. Amen. Um, 
But understand, we need each other. How many of you are going through some stuff? Right? Don't be embarrassed. I raise my hand. I'm, listen. Right? How many of you came through the door with some stuff? Let me start there. You woke up. You came in. How many of you leaving better because you came in? Doesn't mean that my stuff is gone. But I got a little more power. Have a little more strength, more energy. I can go back. And y'all heard me say last week that you better do what's best for you. Even if it hurts. And tell somebody, I found my smile again. I'm smiling. Even though I have issues, I'm smiling now. Because it's not going to be like this always. I'm going to ask, thank you, y'all know that thing. Yeah, go ahead, y'all can sing with me. Uh, I'm going to ask our walking deacon, Sister Sheila Graham, take us to the throne of grace. Here it is. We need each other to survive. I'm going through. But I'm so glad, Deacon Pilate, I'm not going through by myself. Watch this. I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Let Sister Graham pray. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of last week, God dealt with me. I shared on Wednesday morning that I was like Job. I was tossing and turning all through the night. Couldn't sleep. Sister Andrea couldn't sleep. I knew what I wanted to say for the devotional line at 630. And then the Lord said, no, I want you to deal with this one word, adversity. And I couldn't understand because, I, you know, I like to be prepared when I present the word of God. And the Holy Spirit said, don't worry about it, I got you. And Wednesday, God showed up. I preached the sermon in 12 minutes. And then Thursday, I thought that he was going to at least give me a break. And came back and preached the sermon in 16 minutes. But then on Friday, the Lord showed up on Friday morning. And we preached about that adversity. That my adversity is designed to somebody was on the line my adversity is not to kill me but my adversity is to strengthen me my adversity is not to keep me down but my adversity is to lift me up and so I want to say to anybody that's dealing with some adversity you in a good place today because it's to make you stronger won't you pray with sis Graham won't you pray with her Thank you for this time you've given us today, Lord. Thank you for all the many blessings that you had showered upon us, Lord. Thank you for your mercy and your grace, but most of all, thank you for Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for how you bless us mightily in this church, this 124 years that you have given us grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord, that each and every one of us have something going on, Lord. But we know we can put our trust in you, and you will not fail us, Lord. You will not fail us because you are Lord God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth and all that is in it, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, for all things were made through you and for yeah, yeah. you. And you are before all things, and in you all things consist and are held together. Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you. you for what you've done in our lives, Lord how you bless us and keep us. Thank you for the family and the people that you put in our lives to bring us into our destiny. Thank you for the beautiful people that you shower down upon us to help us in our walk of faith. Thank you, Lord. There's not enough words of thank you, Lord. Help us to live a life of thank you, Lord. 
It is in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Glory, dominion, power belong to you, Lord. You and only you. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. And as you go back to your seat, hug somebody and tell them I found my smile again. I lost it for a while, but I found it. Come on, I pray for you. You pray for me. With words. Sister Shirley. With words. With words from my mouth, I love you. I need you to survive. It is his will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need I you. Need you to people of God said, amen. 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 What a delight to hear this report on today. I'm going to turn it over to Deacon Wright as you share with us, Grace, our new family members. Amen. 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 Praise God. And welcome everyone to 124 years of victory. <laughs> In Jesus. Uh, it gives me pleasure this morning to introduce this family, as Pastor Reese just said. That's, uh, and I mean family, They're, the whole family is here, I believe, that's coming to unite with us here at the Grace Baptist Church. Coming based on her Christian experience is Sister Andrea, 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 Andrea J.O. J.O. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we have um, Noah Dayo for Pope Tongue for Baptism. Amen. <laughs> Brianna Sanders, Saunders, and Nashia Saunders. Say it again. Okay, Miyasha Sanders. And Andrea Dale. Oh, Dale. <laughs> okay, you want to finish it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, they're coming as candidates for baptism. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Come on, let's, come on, y'all can do better than that. The Bible says that the angels rejoice over one. Amen. And we thank God for this family. And so we are grateful for this family. To, don't go nowhere. Stay right here for one second. Amen. I'm going to give y'all some love. That's why. I'm going to give you some love. Because it's only one, one of me. Amen. And I can't be everything to everybody at the same time. Amen. I wish I could, but only the Lord can do that. And so, Deacon Jenkins, I want you to come and get this family. Amen. I want you to come get the whole family. And since the day old, Deacon Jenkins is going to be the family's deacon. And that simply means that y'all can't get away from her. One thing about our deacons is we look, we find you. Y'all go missing, they're going to find you. They're going to put, well, you're a detective, so she can out-detective you. I'm going to tell you now, she know how to find you. And so if you go missing, boy, she's going to be on your tracks. She's going to pray for you. She's going to send you words of encouragement just because. Because you don't know what day you're going to need that message. Amen? 
And so we're grateful to have this family with us on today. Sister Pemberton, who teaches our new disciples class, she's not with us, but she'll get in contact with you and just, you know, go through some basic things. But I don't know about you. I'm hippopotamus happy, peacock proud today. Amen. What a joy that we have with this family. Come on, let's celebrate them on today. Give them some love, Grace. Come on. Sister uh, Lisa, won't you come? I want you to meet our youth ministry leader, Dr. Edson. And so we want to get these young people involved. She's about to come and greet y'all. Get y'all. Come on, that's right. Y'all come and give them some love today. Where's the women ministry? Sister Reese, y'all, y'all come and love on this family. This is what we do here. Amen. Make them feel welcome. God is doing a new thing. This old Baptist hymn. Come on, give this family love. Come on. Ushers, can y'all bring me some tissues? Deacons, did y'all greet this family? Y'all, y'all, all right, thank you so very much. Now y'all, 
wait. Some years ago, I was preaching in North Carolina, and this is post pre COVID, and they handed me a program, Deacon Wright. So I was looking at the program, it was like a funeral program, it had so many pages to it. It was good reading material. But then on the back of it, it said, Program subject to change when the Holy Spirit shows up. And this is why we may, you know, there are certain aspects of formality here. But when the Holy Spirit shows up, the program changes, it shifts. Amen. And I've always been mindful that when the Spirit of God starts moving, you move out the way. And so what you're seeing and witness today, it was not planned. But this is because God anointed this moment, this time. Amen. And so I just go with it. Amen. I just I just go with it. Um, you don't. And this is why I say you got to be careful when you say, oh, well, pastor ain't preaching. I'm not coming. Stop. Stop. Because you're going to miss your blessing. My voice is not the only voice that leads to salvation. I just want to tell you that God had this moment designed before any of us came into the world. And so Pastor Pelzer preached, this family responded, we all rejoice, amen. And there will always be a response to the gospel, amen. And I thank God that we're a growing church. And I'm not talking about numbers, I'm talking about spiritually. And so we thank God for what has transpired. We're going to run our announcements. We're going to take up offering, and then we're going to honor our new family member. Amen. And then we're going to bid you a good day. Amen. This is the GBC News Channel. We would like to welcome our visitors in the sanctuary and our YouTube and Facebook online viewers. We welcome you to the worship service and we pray that the word of God shall bless you this day. We pray that if you do not know our Savior Christ Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that you take time today to invite him into your life. May God bless you richly and enjoy the service. Please remember to give and support the ministries at Grace Baptist Church of Waterbury, Connecticut. You can give via the church app via Tithely. You can also give via Cash App using cash tag dollar sign give the number 4 GBC. You can also give via our website at gracebaptistchurch-waterbury.com. You can text to give at 860-530-5551. Or you can mail in your tithes and offerings to Grace Baptist Church, 65 Kingsbury Street, Waterbury, Connecticut, 06702. Life Transformation Hour continues every Sunday at 9 a.m. Please be prepared to become who we were meant to be in God's Word. Buckle up. Pastor Reese has scheduled two sermon series to bring in 2024. First is the sermon series titled Stewardship, a Biblical Perspective on How to Use Our God-Given Resources. Following is the spring sermon series titled Pay Attention to the Signs. It's for your benefit. Join us here at Grace Baptist Church on Sunday, April 14th, 2024 at 10 a.m 
to celebrate 124 years of God's grace. Calling for the Men of Grace. The men's ministry will have a fellowship on June 15th, 2024 at the Nordic Restaurant in Charleston, Rhode Island. The cost for each man is $70, and the deadline to turn in money for pre-reservation is May 18th, 2024. If you are making an electronic payment, please reference Nordic in the memo section. The Larry C. Green Scholarship Ministry presents a pre-Mother's Day brunch on Saturday, May 4th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Featuring recording artist Timmy Maya with special guest comedian Fig. Tickets are $30 and all proceeds will benefit the scholarship fund. We thank you for your continued support of the Grab and Go Ministry here at Grace. The Grab and Go Ministry will continue to serve meals every Saturday at 11 a.m. Get the Word of God and change your life. Join us for the following. First, morning manna devotion every Monday through Friday at 6.30 a.m. Second, Bible enrichment classes every Monday through Friday at 12 noon. And finally, weekly Bible study every Wednesday at 6 p.m. For each of these three, you can call into the conference call line at 617-691-8371. Join us for men's Bible study every Thursday at 6 p.m. via Zoom, followed by fellowship at 6.45 p.m. Log into Zoom and enter the meeting ID 205-777-746, followed by the passcode 005352. Thank you for tuning in to the GBC News Channel. Let the church say amen. We do regret to inform you of the passing of Sister Betty Jenkins, who went home to be with the Lord on last week. Um, their family will be here this week to make arrangements, so we do not have uh, the dates um, as of yet of her funeral service, but we want to lift that family up uh, in our prayers as God will continue to strengthen and comfort them. We also want to lift up Bishop Vance Cotton, First Lady Kim Cotton of the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church, whose younger son went home to be with the Lord the other day as well at the age of 45. Um, and so this is his second son that he had to bury within two years. And so we want to pray for um, Bishop Vance Cotton and the Shallow Church and the family, um, our friend, and brother John Cotton, who pastors the New Hope Church, that's his cousin and all. So we want to lift this family up in our prayers. He will, his homegoing celebration will be um, at the Shallow Church on April 22nd. Uh, the visitation will be from 10 to 11, and the service will begin at 11 a.m. Uh, we also want to lift up um, Pastor James Hall um, of the Triumph Baptist Church, who lost two of his administrators back to back. Um, and they know, I know what it means to have a good administrator and, um, they were his administrators for the past 40 years and, uh, they both passed in the same week. And so, uh, we want to lift up the Triumph Baptist Church in Philadelphia and Pastor James Hall and family. That's why I say my brothers and sisters, you better enjoy every moment that you have because you don't know when you're going to be able to get another one. Amen. And so uh, we continue to pray for them. You heard the announcement about the pre-Mother's Day brunch. Um, the scholarship ministry will be out there in the foyer um, to take your payment. Uh, we want to be supportive of our scholarship ministry. You see all these young kids. We just have like three just join, amen, and we got some others. We want to make sure that we invest in their future, amen, that there will be funds available for them, amen. And when you look at this scholarship ministry over 30 plus years, giving out almost $400,000 plus, amen, that's a testimony of how good God is, amen. And so we want to continue to um, be a blessing to them. Also, my brothers and sisters, listen, we also want to support um, our organizations that are supporting our young people. And Granville Academy is one 
that continues to plan programs, educational enrichment um, programs for our young people. So please see uh, Trustee uh, Jean Council. Is she here? Stand up there. Um, she's part of Granville. If you're all part of Granville, I'm not calling Judge Mosley because I'm going to let these young folks work and represent. He undid his part. Amen. Um, but they do a great job um, making sure that they invest in our children. And so sign your kids up. Amen. That they may be able to receive the blessings that God has given through Granville. How many years, Judge Mosley? Yeah, I've been in, I graduated in 92, so, okay, 32 years. Yeah, I've been out of high school for 32 years. Good God Almighty. All right. I shouldn't have asked that question. <laughs> uh, but again, we want to uh, be a blessing um, to them. Um, and so, again, please, sir, please sponsor. I've already sponsored five tickets um, for the pre-Mother's Day brunch. Um, I always do that. And so, uh, see Sister Gloria Johnson. Now, my five tickets go to seniors. Amen. Not young people. Y'all can work and pay your own way. Amen. My five tickets go to seniors. Amen. And so, if you want to attend the pre-Mother's Day brunch, see Sister Gloria Johnson and get one of the five tickets that I sponsored. Amen. Um, I think those are all the announcements that we do have. Um, we do want to say that we are in preparation um, to start the work on our air conditioning and heating system. Amen. Um, and so we're, we're, we're on our way to do that. And then the first Sunday in June, we are back outdoors. Amen. We are back outdoors with parking lot worship. And uh, it's in my mind, Deacon Pollen, to do an outdoor baptism. Um, and I'm, I, it's in my mind. And I just have to work out the details. Um, Y'all know me. I'm always thinking outside the box. Amen. Um, but I'm thinking of making that happen, that we may be able to do an outdoor baptism. Um, and so it's going to work. Amen. It's, it, it'll work. Amen. Because some of y'all going to help me make it work. All right, so it's, it's, it's going to work. Um, it is with great joy and privilege. So last year, last year, um, the Lord laid on my heart to start honoring individuals in the Waterbury community who have demonstrated not just a selfless sacrifice, but sacrifice of family, sacrifice of career, um, just sacrifice in making our community better. Um, there are so many unsung heroes in Waterbury that have not been acknowledged, that should be acknowledged. Amen. And let me say this. You don't have to be 80 to be honored. Amen. God used people at all levels of life. I wish I could get a witness. And, and, and sometimes folks say, oh, you know, this person hasn't been here long enough. They haven't done this. Listen, if a person has made an impact and consistently makes an impact, you don't have to wait till they almost in the grave to say thank you. Um, and so last year, we honored LaSalle Blanks um, of Channel 8 News, um, who had a major stroke. Um, but before that, he represented positive stories of Waterbury. Um, he lifted this community up. Um, through the vehicle that God had given him. And this year, we have one who is an unsung hero. Definition of a hero is someone who has done something brave, new, or good, and who is therefore greatly admired by a lot of people. Our honoree today, she fits this definition. They talk about black girl magic, um, and she exemplifies black woman magic. Amen. Um, and my daughter, um, who met um, Detective Dale, um, admires her. There's uh, so many black and brown young girls who admires Detective Dale. She served in the Waterbury Police Department for many years. I don't know the exact number of years, but 
many years. Um, and God elevated her promotion after promotion, ended up with the last promotion of detective. That every community event that she could make, she was there. In uniform, outside of uniform. God has given her not just the gift of voice, not, and I mean not just to sing, but the gift of voice to make an impact on black and brown children, um, black and brown men and women of Waterbury. Um, she's going to tell you what you need to hear and not what you want to hear. Um, and some folks need that. Amen. Um, she's risked her life day in and day out that we may have a better life sacrificing her family, her children, herself, to make sure that the citizens of Waterbury were safe on the streets of Waterbury. I've watched her from a distance, and I've had a privilege over the last couple of years to watch her up close. And it's the same person that I saw from a distance. It's the same person that I see up close. Um, she says something to me in way of conversation that really blessed me. And she said, Pastor, I've never heard any negative thing about you. All that I hear is the good things that you and Grace do in this community. Amen. And that blessed my soul. It really did. It, it blessed my soul. Due to an unfortunate injury, she was forced to retire from the Waterbury Police Department. But I believe that God closed that door on purpose. I believe that God closed that door on purpose because there's a greater door that is opening up for her. I said there's a greater door. See, God doesn't close doors. When you're a child of God, he don't leave you homeless. I got Bible for it. I once was young, but now I'm old. I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And God didn't close that door for her to be begging for bread. That God has a greater door. Amen. And all she has to do is walk in the power. She's going to experience some problems, but she's on purpose. Amen. And so, Grace, won't you help me to celebrate our second community hero, Sister Andrea Deo, amen. I'm coming down, amen. I'm coming down. Award is presented to Andrea Deo in grateful appreciation for your unwavering commitment to Grace Baptist Church and the Waterbury community on this 14th day of April 2024. We believe in giving folks their flowers while they can see and smell the beauty that they can bring. Amen. And then on behalf of the church and our pastoral care ministry, we have this wonderful basket of goodies for you. Amen. Uh, so we're going to sit this here uh, for you. Um, come on, let's give her celebration. give her remarks. I won't be before you long, but something that was said was really important today. Among, there was many things that were said, but um, I spent 18 years with Waterbury Police Department. I broke my neck um, in an accident. And
and I was mourning, and I was trying, I was mourning losing my job because I, I need to take care of my kids. The day, my last day at the Waterbury Police Department, I pulled up into my driveway. I didn't have a plan. And I got a call. Can you start a new job? Literally the same day I left there with my belongings. But I did more. And I realized what was said today. We talked about the peas. Excuse me. The community saw a problem. I saw a problem. And I realized that there was power in compassion. The purpose was to effectively lead by example and represent the needs of the community. So I heard those three Ps, and I know what my purpose was, is to be compassionate. And we need to do that not just on the job because there's cameras. We need to just do it because no one's looking. So when I mourned, I this song came to me. Um, it was a song that my mother loved, and she never made it to the age of 46. My birthday is next week, and I will be 46. And I'm just grateful <laughs> because I broke my neck, and I, I wouldn't be here today to talk about it. So give me um, two seconds, please. <laughs> Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? And why? Should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven, heaven and home when Jesus sings?
some church today. because I'm happy. I said I sing because I'm happy. That's new evidence of answer prayer because you can break your neck and still sing for God. Only God can do that. We have in church today. I said the spirit of God is in this place today. <laughs> As sister, I just told Sister Reese, I said, we got a little praise ministry now. We, could, we, we, we got it now. God will send the parts that you need. Amen. But, but I was watching her daughter while her mother was singing. Tears was flowing down her eyes. Those are tears of joy. They're not tears of sorrow. See, that's why you got no difference between crying with sorrow and crying because you're happy. Amen. And um, so we thank God. Listen, I'm not going to hold you. Sister Reese needs to make an announcement, and we're going to take offering, and um, we're going to go and rejoice in the Lord. Uh, my heart is filled. My spirit is filled. Um, and so I just thank God for for you today. Um, Sister Reese is going to come and then. Yes, yes. Um. Short people problems. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good morning. I'm going to be real quick. This is to the women. You guys know Women's Day is coming up. Mother's Day, May 12th, colors green, 10 o'clock service. And I think I want some young people, some young ladies this year to read scripture and pray. And we're going to honor our woman of the year, who I already know who that is. She will find out on Mother's Day. <laughs> um, 
I think that's it. So green, any shade. We're taking a picture after service because we all gonna look good. And we gonna put together a choir. You already see, we already got people that can sing. Yeah. So all of us can come together and sing on Mother's Day. Um, I think that's it. Oh, and the speaker, I'm sorry, the preacher of the morning will be, um, you guys remember Reverend Tamika Giroux that came last year? So this year her mother's coming. So we're in for a treat. Um, you guys will not be disappointed. So um, hopefully all of you guys will be here on Mother's Day. All right. Thank you. Amen. And Dr. Pauline Moore is the um, chancellor of Whalen Temple Theological Seminary, who is honoring me on June 7th with an honorary doctorate degree. Um, and so we will be in Maryland. I hope that some of you from Grace will come. Um, it's a Friday, but uh, y'all can get on the bus on the church van and come and support. If not, uh, we thank God for your prayers. Um, that's June 7th, and we'll have that information because it's a great honor uh, when folks honor you. Amen. And um, so I am appreciative of that great honor. All right, ushers is going to come and uh, we're going to worship through giving. Amen. We ain't had a hallelujah high time. Amen. And now it's going to cost you something. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you can't be God's giving no matter how hard you try. Amen. The more you give, the more he gives to you. And y'all looking mighty, mighty good. Amen. And uh, those cars out there looking mighty shiny. Amen. So I know that the Lord's been good to you. If you are on Facebook and YouTube, um, our giving slide is up. You can give via our church app, uh, cash app. You can text to give online or as grandmama says, send by money. Amen. That means you just mail it and send it by somebody. Amen. And so again, ushers, won't you come as we prepare to worship through giving? I told y'all Pastor Pelzer can do so much. Amen. And uh, we thank God he jumped on the keys over there and uh, we appreciate uh, him on this morning. All right. Church anniversary assessment is $124 today. Amen. And it is to go to repair and replace our parking lot. Amen. Um, and so your assessment today is 124. Now don't take what you give in your tithes and shift it over to your anniversary. That's robbing God. Amen. Will a man rob God? We don't want, to, we got a detective who just joined the church. Amen. And uh, we got Parkman that used to be here, so you know, you don't want to be arrested today, all right? All right, pa Pastor Pels, I don't know if you're still on the keys. Um, thank you, man. Give us something good, buddy.
eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the gift and the giver. We thank you, God, for those who gave and those who had the desire to give. And we thank you, Lord, that we're able, God, to be a blessing to so many. Thank you for keeping these doors open for 124 years. And Lord, by evidence today, you have added that we continue for generations to come to keep these doors open. And so we appreciate, God, all that you have done, will do. It is in Jesus' name we do pray, as the people of God say, amen. amen. All right, my brothers and sisters, we want to prepare ourselves to leave. Uh, ladies, y'all have a meeting briefly you're right here in the sanctuary with Sister Bree. Where, oh, that's it? That's the meeting? Oh, all right. Okay. All right, I thought you wanted to meet with them, but okay. All right. My bad. Uh, amen. Um, let me just say this, um, Grace. Listen, we know that we are scheduled for a church meeting. Um, we are working on getting our finances in order so we can have our church meeting. So that's the only holdup, and we will have it as soon as we get those rectified. Amen. Amen. All right. Lord, we thank you, and we bless your name. We thank you, O oh God, for how you have blessed us today. Thank you because we learned the truth about the treasurer, that we have power. We will experience problems but that produces our purpose. We thank you, O oh God, for Pastor Pelzer, how you used him mightily today. And then, Lord, we thank you for Sister Deo, and we thank you, God, for her sacrifice. We thank, thank you for the doors that you have opened and continue to open for her and her children. We pray, O oh God, that you will watch over them. And then, Lord, we pray, Lord, one for another. Lord, all of us have gone through the storms of life. But we can testify by a smile today that we may have been broken, but Lord, we didn't bend. We thank you, O oh God, for our ups and our downs. And as Pastor Pelzer said, every once in a while, we need a jump. Thank you for those who jump us with a word of encouragement. Thank you for those who jump us with a card in the mail. Thank you for those who jump us by putting their arms around us and giving us a hug. And so, Lord, we thank you because you've been so kind and compassionate towards us. And then, Lord, again, we appreciate 124 years. Thank you, O oh God, that for the past nine years, I was able to experience this great ministry here at Grace. And so now, Lord, as we deal with this frustrating thing called life, cope with the mean streets of Waterbury, Continue to walk with us and talk with us because we have no idea what the enemy has in store for us. But Lord, with you on our side, there's no way that we can lose. There's no way we can be defeated. And so we just want to say thank you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Here's my ear hug to you. I love you. I swear I do. May God bless you. Heaven smile down upon you is my prayer. <laughs>